first thing that we're going to do is install the O-Drive tool. You can do this in a few ways. I'm going to explain two. Standalone Python on Windows or on Ubuntu. First I'm going to do Windows. So you have to click this link. And you can install Python here. Click Run. Click Add Python to Pod. That's very important. Close. Now that Python is installed, we can open our command prompt and enter this command. Once this is installed, we can enter the O drive tool. Now you have to plug in power and the USB cable of your board. It's important that you also plug in power because the USB does not provide power to the board. As you can see, this is now connected. If it doesn't want to connect, you have to go here, list all devices and change the native interface driver to win USB with the ZX tool, you can download this for free online. Okay, so now we're going to go onto the Ubuntu version. For the Ubuntu installation, I have switched to my Ubuntu machine. This is a virtual machine, I have installed this using VMware. You can also do this by following this tutorial. So now it's time to install Python on this virtual machine. So I'm going to open the terminal. Copy this command. It was already installed. I'm gonna install it pip. If there are any yes no questions, you can always answer yes. I'm already going to copy the next command. Now we can install O Drive. And to make sure that it recognizes the board, we need to run these commands. Then we need to reboot the system. Now we can enter the O drive tool. And if we plug in the USB and the power on the board again, select connect to virtual machine. It should connect as you can see. So now we can enter commands. Okay, so now it's installed on Ubuntu as well. As you can see, I've switched to the Windows machine again. So there are a lot of settings in O Drive, but there are only a few necessary ones to get it working and not break anything. To access these commands, you start with ODRV0 in this case, because it's connected as ODRV0, so O Drive 0. And then you place a dot and then Access one or access zero on the single access board. It's always access zero. So, for example, if you want to find extra commands, you can hit the tab button, and you get the options in that state. If something goes wrong, you can dump the errors. So. This, with this command, that as you can see, no errors at this time. So we're gonna go over these settings. 
you have to configure the CPR value of your encoder. For me, this is 1600. This is four times the PPR value. Just like that. You can set a current limit. For example, 30 amps. The velocity limit. This is set to 2 standard, as you can see, but this is way too low because you will get an overspeed error right away, actually. So, for example, 25, this is in rotations per second. You need to configure the pole pairs of your motor. This is standard set to 7, I think. Yes, and that's also what I need, so I'm not going to change that. With the latest firmware, you have to enable the brake resistor. With the firmware that is loaded on the other boards right now, you don't have to do this because they have firmware version, I think, 5.1, and then this command doesn't exist. But I'm going to make another video how to upgrade the firmware to the newest one, and then you will have to use this command. So set this to true. So now the necessary settings are set and now we're going to try the calibration sequence. So first you try full calibration sequence. If that doesn't work so you get an error, you try these things separately and you can check every time with dump errors what error you are, you are getting. If you don't get an error, you can try the full access calibration again. So once these are working, if you use an index pin, you need to do this, otherwise you don't. So if that works, you can enter closed loop control. And if that works, you can save the motor calibration and the encoder calibration. For the encoder calibration to be pre-calibrated, you need an index pin. Now you can enable the startup motor calibration if you don't have it set to pre-calibrated you can do the same for the encoder offset calibration and for the index search and you can also enable the closed loop control at startup using this command then you have to save your configuration and reboot and now everything should be ready to go now you have to choose between control modes. There are three basic control modes. That's velocity control, turn control and position control. Position control is most used but you can use any of those and there are actually more but these are the three basic ones. So you can set your control modes using these commands and you give the input velocity, the input torque and the input position with these commands. There are of course a lot more commands, you can find them using the tab button as mentioned before or you can take a look at the O-Drive box and if we go here So here it says you're using an older version, that's because we're in the docs of the V3 and not of the O-Drive Pro So here you can find a lot more, also protocols and interfaces is also very important, but that's different for everyone so I'm not going to explain that right now. If you need to find something, you can find it right here, or you can ask a question in the Discord or on the forum. I hope you learned something with this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.